Hi, Alex. Hi, Aaron. So I thought um, it would be a great idea off the back of the webinar that we had some months ago back in January, uh, engaging our existing uh, teachers around teaching vocab across the curriculum to just give a very quick video update on MAPPA, which is now the name of our new tool to improve disciplinary literacy across the curriculum. Just to recap, um, most of our customers uh, enjoy Bedrock vocabulary because it's an off the shelf solution to improving cross curricular tier two vocabulary whilst getting children to read a range of interesting fiction and non-fiction. But the schools that are really trying to turn the tide on vocabulary gaps uh, in their community uh, have been asking us for an additional tool to allow them to uh, plan, map their own tier three curriculum on, on Bedrock. So we've responded to those requests and we're really, really excited to have launched MAPA. We truly believe that it is going to revolutionise the way that, that teachers across the curriculum approach the teaching of subject specific tier three vocabulary um, in their classrooms. And I think this is really important because you know, the likes of the Education Endowment Foundation have said that one of the best ways that we can go about improving literacy in schools is to to foreground the direct instruction of vocabulary um, and to focus on disciplinary literacy. And MAPA is going to allow teachers to, to create absolute visibility and consistency around the language which is being taught um, in their school. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, a, a, an overview of some uh, content that I've, I've built for um, the science subject and the topic being cell structure. So um, what I'm doing here as a science teacher is uh, loading in some words, um, adding new words, selecting the topic that I want to uh, add my words to. And I'm saying that the words are for um, the topic of cell structure. And that I'm, I'm happy um, to get structure right. I'm happy to share the content that I'm going to build with other teachers around the world. Um, and this is the great thing about MAPA. Building out a vocabulary curriculum takes a while. So uh, if you can leverage the support of the teaching and learning community, it's going to help you do that much more quickly. Um, yeah, lots of schools are already on this journey, but to have a systemized way of teaching this language is really going to support them. Absolutely. So in this instance, I'm actually uh, I'm actually building out my curriculum map so that when year sevens arrive, for example, all of the language from from the subject of science has been planned and mapped for that academic year. And the system will roll over every year if it needs to. But um, thinking about language being core, not taught in the classroom, uh, I can actually now leverage MAPA to teach ad hoc words. So if a word comes up in my classroom and the children don't understand, I can feed that into the, 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 the teaching experience for the pupils that week. Uh, and, and I can add words on an ad hoc basis or a planned basis. Great. So before term, you plan, but then actually as things come up, you can add, add words in too. Absolutely. So I'll go through and what I can do as I'm planning is I can say, right, well, um, I'm doing cell structure um, with year seven. And these are the terms that I'm going to be uh, requiring my, my year sevens to know over this half term. And I'm going to add the words and then the system will confirm uh, the words. And then you go ahead and you start adding that tier three vocabulary to that topic. Now, is there a recommended number of words per topic? Um, well, you, you kind of be doing topics each half term. So we would recommend up to 30 terms um, for each half term. Uh, the system will actually tell you whether you've put in too many words and whether a class is in or out of range for optimal learning. Um, but when you scale up 30 words uh, for a year group, for example, across all of the subjects in the school, what, what the outcome there is, is, is an incredibly rich language learning experience for the pupils, which is consistent, robust, deep and broad. 
Uh, and that's the benefit of, of not leaving vocabulary to be a, a core exercise, but a, a taught exercise. So um, if we look at the words that I've loaded in for the, the subject of science, the cell structure, I can then, I'm just going to pick on nucleus here, uh, I can build uh, a learning experience for pupils for the word nucleus. So I can create a quiz question. And because there's already a quiz question for nucleus available, I can uh, look at that question and there's my question. There are the options and I can even customize the feedback. Now I could just use that content uh, straight away or I could copy it and edit it and make modifications to it so I can actually uh, make it my own. But this is the real benefit of uh, sharing your content. I can then um, create a definition and I can see here for nucleus, the definition has already been uh, written. I can create a description and example so that the pupils are having the word broken down for them as opposed to just quite nebulous definitions. Yeah. Uh, I can then, if I need to, I can create a formula because sometimes tier three terms have a formula as well. So I would type my formula in here and save the formula. I can then- So if you were doing energy within science? Absolutely, you can yeah. put a formula in there too. Um, now, it's really helpful. We were talking earlier on, Alex, uh, what was that, that term about? Dual, dual coding. coding, yes. So uh, I'm making the language multi, uh, you know, breaking it down and making the learning experience multimodal. But uh, when the word nucleus comes on the screen, it also needs an image to support it. So I can see that nucleus already has an image available to it. Um, so I could use that one. Or actually, I want to up my own, upload my own image. I can then create uh, an activity um, around the word nucleus. So in this instance, I've already built a piece of content. So it says uh, which image shows the nucleus of a cell and I've uploaded the content. By the way, this probably, this cat wouldn't be a good example because it's clearly wrong. and might be a bit too easy for students. Um, and then I can think about which words are similar to nucleus. So I can say that core is similar, but the words surround surface are not. Or I could look at antonyms uh, or differences and the word exterior being uh, different or core cell lining. And then again, all of the feedback is customizable. And then finally, uh, we can create a written activity uh, for the pupils to uh, you know, extend their understanding or, or, or to actually make them uh, think clearly about definition. Teacher creativity here is what's going to drive understanding. So in the instance of uh, nucleus, I've said, if you had to compare uh, nucleus to something else in the body, what would it be and why? So in this instance, I'm not asking the pupils to give a scientific definition of nucleus. I'm asking them to think deeply about what is it? What's its function? And then the pupils um, uh, written response for the word nucleus will end up in the uh, pupils knowledge organizer, which um, all bedrock schools will know is, is powered by a deep learning algorithm. So nucleus will appear here and what the pupils have written for nucleus will appear here as well. Um, now, the great thing about using MAPA uh, to build out your tier three curriculum across the school to improve disciplinary literacy, apart from the fact that it creates consistency, coherency, is the fact that you're building it on top of Bedrock's deep learning algorithms. So um, Nucleus, if they fail your quiz question that you wrote, the system will track that as a word that they are learning, which takes a massive burden away from the teacher because they can be confident that the language that they know is important for the subject is being properly taught and recapped at a pupil level in a way that would take a lot of time in the classroom. And indeed, if they've even learned nucleus, but a month later or another month later, they fail nucleus on a memory check, nucleus will move back over to vocabulary I'm learning. So it's an extremely powerful way of ensuring that gaps in subject knowledge are always checked and uh, intervention takes place to make sure that there's robust understanding. This information is currently not being tracked by most schools. 
I mean, to have that word level information of where your students are at in their um, understanding of the knowledge in your um, subject area is going to be transformative. That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, and in terms of what schools are doing right now, um, we're, we're delighted to have switched Mapper on for, for many of our, of our schools and their teams across the curriculum are now on, on Mapper building out content and building out their tier three vocabulary curriculum so that um, in the new academic year when children log on, they're going to have a, a really rich uh, uh, learning experience with regards to tier three subject specific vocabulary on top of an already aspirational tier two vocabulary curriculum in, in bedrock vocabulary. Um, so if, if any, any teachers uh, who attended the, the webinar on MAPA uh, back in January now would like to start using it, um, please do get in touch with your account manager or, or get in touch with us at, 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 on our website. And we'd be delighted to talk to you about getting MAPA going in your school.